Hello there, beautiful people. Welcome to my channel. This is your girl, Mommy So True. Hey guys, so good to see you. Welcome back and hello to my new subscribers. If you're new to the channel, take a moment, like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss those weekly videos from your girl, Mommy So True. Guys, I'm checking in and I want to talk to you about this how the narcissist will always describe you to others. This is so important, especially for those who've been discarded, especially for those who woke up one day and their entire world changed because you were dealing with a narcissist who wanted to continue their narcissistic cycle with a new victim, the new supply, the next one on the list. And there's so many reasons why discards happen. I truly honestly believe that this discard saves your life. <laughs> the rejection from a narcissist, the rejection from anyone in life, period, is God's ultimate protection over you. You know, it's so crazy that now that I've gotten to this point in my healing journey, I can look back and recognize what I could not see before. Because of the trauma bond, you're blind to so much. And one of the things and the main thing you're blind to is that what you think is love with the narcissist, it's not. You're nothing but a primary love interest to the narcissist, which ultimately means that you're just a field source of supply because that is all they want and that is what they need to be able to move in life, to be able to really live, sometimes thrive. They need to have that ultimate primary love interest, which becomes that spouse. They want the one they end up marrying, the one they end up locking a relationship within for five years, 10 years. Married or not, relationships with narcissists are so intense. They're so deep. That's why the breakup with a narcissist is so intense and so deep and it's not like any other breakup you will ever experience because this person was literally sucking life out of you on every level. Emotionally, you were being tormented. Physically, it manifested and showed you were, you were sick. Headaches, stomach aches, can't sleep, can't eat, gaining weight, overeating because of depression. You know, it, it, it's just the emotional roller coaster, the imbalance that came with the, the relationship, the drama that came with their family, that you endured, that you dealt with, that you put up with. See, they are so good at deceiving you. That's why they love bomb, because they have to deceive you. They have to come into the door and pretend like they're emotionally equipped when they know they're not. They come into the door and act like they're just like you and they match you at your level when God knows they're not. Eventually, it shows for itself. The truth reveals for itself because the mask unwinds the longer they remain in a relationship with someone who is opposite of who they are. Who they are is a manipulator, someone who plays all sides because it's all about being perceived a certain way. It's all about making sure that everyone on the outside does not know how evil they really are to you as a husband or how really evil they are to you as a girlfriend. Everybody on the outside thinks that this person is sweet. They might even be a pastor. They might have a very important role. They might, you know, make themselves appear to be this role model to this world. They're probably a public figure with a lot of following on the internet. They probably carry some significant job because it's an ego booster. This person lives in this fantasy mindset where they think that they're entitled to be worshipped. So everyone must bow down. Everyone must worship them. And in order to get that type of treatment, they must deceive everyone to make them think that they're good people. To make them think that they're givers. That they love God. 
when it's nothing but an act. It's nothing but a show. A narcissist is a Grammy nominating, award winning actor and actress. They will put on a show and put it on real good. Look at how look at how they got you involved. They tricked you because you're not dumb. They tricked you. They lied to you. They told you they wanted this life. They told you they so real. They, you know, you, you blessed. You're blessed to know them. You should be thrilled that they're in your life. This is how they come off. They're such a man, this and such a woman, that King Kong. But ain't got no common sense. No common sense. Lacking some of the most vital things that a human being needs to make relationships work and function properly. Oh, but in their mind, though, everything I just said is a lie. <laughs> in their mind, though, it is your fault that they discarded you. It is your fault that the relationship did not work. It is your fault that they had to treat you the way they've treated you. Because in their mind, <laughs> you're the childish one. In their mind, you don't know how to communicate. In their mind, you are mentally and emotionally unstable. Let them tell it. You're the reason why they felt the need to go and cheat. You actually pushed them to go cheat. Let them tell it. In their mind, everything that's happened, everything that didn't happen is your fault. And that is the narrative that they're going to take and run with. This is what everyone outside of the two of you must believe. And this goes for the families too, those narcissistic families. There is a certain way they must always describe you to other people. And, and it all depends on your status with them. Did you cut them off? Did you discard them? Did you start setting boundaries? Have you started saying no? Have you changed the way you answer your calls by limiting how much you answer your calls and text messages from these narcissists? Because depending on those things, that polished mask that they have on, they will feel the need to continue polishing it. Because to them, it's about saving their face. <laughs> They will stick to the lies. They'll die with their lies because they should never be exposed. The truth should never come out. This is why they are so strategic in their planning and how they groom their victims. This is why by the time you catch them and find out that there is a new victim, that the new supply does exist, they're lying. Oh, we just met. Oh, somebody that just started working at the job. They're lying. They have to continue the lies. They have to create new lies. Because as a manipulator, you gaslight people. Gaslighting is when you make someone believe that what they know is not true. This is serious mental abuse. And this is what they do to the outside world. This could be your children. This could be family members, close friends, coworkers. The outside world has to believe that this person carries no faults that they are actually innocent and that they are the victim. And in order to successfully do that, they have to gaslight these people. Sometimes the flying monkeys are not stupid. They're just, they're gaslit because the narcissist is so good at what they do. They can convince people to believe that they are just not the person that you have seen them for. 
the demon that you've discovered behind those eyes, they only live to protect that demon. They would rather die with their lies. They would rather die smearing your name. They would rather die alienating you from your children than to take accountability. Than to seek proper guidance, help, and deliverance. Than to be really real and say, you know what? I am a messed up person. I do lie a lot because I need to be validated and I cannot tell the truth because the truth makes me feel inferior. Of course, you'll never get that from them. But man, if only they could be truthful. They wouldn't have to spend the rest of their life trying to describe you as the abuser. A lot of times it's hard to differentiate who's the narcissist and who's the abuser because the narcissist is such a good actor. They'll have your own kids hating you. They'll have your own children believing that you are not a good parent. Your children will make you feel unworthy as a parent when you know what you've put in. You know the hard work, dedication, and time that you've given. And you know that the narcissistic parent did not put in even 50% of that. But the children are so deceived because they're being used as objects. They're being fed lies. They're being sold with future fake and promises. They're being gifted materialistic things to keep them in this narcissistic web. And you are painted at the, as this bad guy. When the truth and the reality truly is you've spent years, maybe even decades raising those children because that narcissistic parent was never even really there. Their presence never counted because when they were there, they weren't even there and they never were there. Because work was more of a priority than their family, because at work. They can create and keep up with new and old victims because at work. They can neglect you. You don't really matter. You only matter when it's time to show you off. Other than that, you're irrelevant. And the longer you stay with them, the more you feel that way. You will always be described as the one who couldn't keep up with the narcissist. Your parenting was insufficient. Your cooking was insufficient. You didn't know how to console them when they were down. You didn't know how to attend to their needs. You were actually the one who was selfish. <laughs> you are actually the narcissist. This is the this is the picture that's being painted of you. Especially if you've become their worst nightmare because You've caught on to the fact that they can't feel love, they lack empathy, and that they don't care for you, and that they just only pretend to care from you to get and continue to take things from you. Whether it be physical, materialistic, emotional, or just spiritual drainage, they're going to take it from you. And once you catch on to it, now you've become their biggest enemy. If you pay attention to how the discard happens, you're led up to it. They strategically plan the discard. It doesn't just happen overnight. They knew they were going to leave. That's why months before, weeks before, years before, there were so many fights. So many chaotic, unexplainable fights where they projected things onto you, calling you an, a cheater. Accusing you of going out and doing things after creating arguments, you chose to walk away or drive away because you want to go clear your mind, get fresh air. And you come back, you're being falsely accused of creeping and cheating because that's what really they do. 
and they're actually getting tired of sneaking around with it because they've they've groomed the supply that they're going to after they leave you. So you're being hit with all these bombs, all these arguments, there's all this shit that just don't make sense. They're creating stuff. They're making up stuff. They're coming up with stuff. Then then they have selective amnesia where they're forgetting stuff that they've said and that they've done, but they remember stuff that you've said and that you've done. <laughs> And that's what everybody else is going to hear about. All the stuff that you said and that you've done. Because they forgot everything that they've done. They forgot the fact that you have been reacting to their abuse. They didn't actually, they didn't forget it. That actually just does not matter. Because they're sick and wicked enough to make themselves believe that their wrongdoing is justified. It's okay to have called you out your name all those times. It's okay to have dogged you and disrespected you all those times. But when you do it or when you've done it, they're holding a grudge. Now, every time you speak on your feelings, they're reminding you, well, last time we argued, you called me a bitch. <laughs> you make me feel less of a man because you called me a bitch. Well, maybe I called you a bitch because you act like one. Maybe I called you a bitch because you have traded roles with me and you act like the female in this relationship or even vice versa. She out destroying your name and smearing your name because you had to check her about herself and let her know what a child she is. You told her straight up, baby, you look good on the outside. You fine as wine, but you ain't got no fucking common sense. Your brain is dead. Spiritually ain't shit there. You keep trying to make it seem like I need to be the one who's blessed to have you in my life. But honey, that's not true. And you and them know the truth. When it all boils down to it, the narcissist can run out here, talk about you, smear your name, try to make it seem like you're the insignificant one. You just, you're so mentally messed up. They love that. Oh, they're going to weaponize the fact that they know about your trauma. They know your secrets. They know about your past relationships. So they're justified enough to ruin your name based on what they know about you. The things that you've shared. But when you real and when you solid and when you love yourself and you take your power back and you have self-esteem, something they don't have. That's why they ruining you. That's why they out here describing you as as them. Because they don't have no self-esteem. They can't love themselves. But you love yourself. And when you know who you are, they cannot change that. It don't matter how they out here describing you. They can talk about you till they purple, blue, green, yellow, or dead. It don't matter. What you know about you is what matters. Because a narcissist will always, always focus on saving themselves. The number one selfish being. You're, you're, you're only focused on yourself, even though you're wrong in so many ways. They're so selfish that they will dog their children out just to hurt the parents. But then turn around and make others on the outside think that. The parent who who's been victimized is the bad one. These people are sick and they're dysfunctional. And they don't like anyone who is not willing to play their sick and silly narcissistic game. At some point, you wake up and you're cool on the narcissist and now they hate you. That's fine. Honestly, if the narcissist is not hating on you or if they don't hate you, you ain't doing something right. If they, if they are still in your face... If they're not talking about you enough, you have not put them where they need to be. If a narcissist is not pissed off talking about you, if they are not discarding you, acting like they're happier with someone else, it's because you're still busy trying to keep them in your life. You're still, you're still their doormat. You're still that primary supply, which they love you for being. <laughs> You know, it, it's it's crazy, but it's the truth. It is the truth. You were you were given a sense false of security from the narcissist. 
when you were love bombed. And once the relationship ends, you see how much they never had your back because they continue to ruin you just to avoid exposure that they are truly, truly the problem. That they are truly cursed. That their brain is actually probably damaged severely and it's un unreversible. And that's why they can't admit fault. That's why they can't even see their own fault. But that is just too bad. So sad because dragging innocent people through the mud who have put in work to help you. To help you see your own potential. Because a lot of narcissists have great potential. And here you come as this empath, this chosen vessel. Who sees that potential and love on them for that? And you do all this work to try to help them. But then one day you find out that there's this word called narcissist and they fit that to a T. One day you discover that, wow, I'm actually not crazy. I've been dealing with a crazy person. Borderline psychopath, sociopath type behavior. It's not me. It's them. I've been putting in all this work and they could not do anything for me. They could not give me nothing back that helped me, motivated me, pushed me and put me where I needed to be. They could not even pour into me. So I had to figure out a way to get away, disconnect, cut them off, discard them or force them to discard me. A lot of y'all are wise like that. You will manipulate the whole relationship so they can find their way away from you. You push them out the door because you have to. You got to figure out a way to get away. The ultimate escape plan becomes your determination when your eyes are open to what's happening with you, with this person. See, the thing that I want people to know, especially narcissists who watch my channel, it is never going to be about hating y'all a lot of us don't even have the heart to sit there and bash you after the relationship we're literally talking about it so we can grow educate and move forward because we're highly disappointed we're highly disappointed and i want you to know that it's not about hating you we don't have time for that we don't have the energy for that some of us may be so hurt we don't wish you well I, and I don't disagree for people who feel that way. I don't have to pray for my enemy if I don't want to. We'll just leave that there. I'm getting, I'm growing. I'll get there one day. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> but you're going to be an enemy and you chose to be an enemy, especially if I've put in decades of my time, my love, my patience. I've taken so much pain and abuse. And you continue to spit in my face. Go even as far as have a child on you. Then turn around and make it seem like it's your fault. And then turn around and maybe go as far as engage the new victim. Just to shit on you. Just to spit in your face. Sit on social media and create all these posts and act like they just living their best life and moving on and all of that while you somewhere hurting and bleeding. It is not okay. It is not okay. It takes a lot to diagnose NPD. That is why majority of the people on this earth are walking around undiagnosed, will never be diagnosed. So that means they'll never be properly helped. They'll never seek proper deliverance. They'll, they'll, just, they'll just remain stagnant where they are. That's why they will always find victims. The victim search will always continue. It will always continue. They're master deceivers. Sick and delusional in every way that you can think of. Completely 
wackos. And if they're not dragging you down with them, they're not satisfied. This is a dead being who is drowning in their own misery. And they just want to drag you along with them, drag you and pull you through the mud with them until you die. That's all. They just, they just want you to just stick around, accept them for who they are. But to those narcissists watching these channels, we don't care to hate you. We don't. It's actually not even really about you. We're figuring you out. We're learning you for our growth. So that we can be strong and move forward in spite of the smear campaigns that you can't help but to, you know, produce. You can't help but to keep lying. You can't help but to not go get the right help. To me, narcissists don't need therapy. They need God. Because therapists will get gas lit by a narcissist. A narcissist will manipulate the shit out of a therapist. Because they're going to sit there and play victim the whole time. Every session. And most therapists, unfortunately, are not NPD certified like victims of narcissistic abuse. So... <laughs> The fact that they can't even see you for who you really are. And you spent your time trying to prove yourself over and over and over again to these family members, this parent, this so-called lover and partner. All they do is turn around and try to figure out a way to prove that that is not what you did. And to me, that's the most hurtful part about surviving narcissistic abuse is when you have to hear about how they're discrediting you for what you actually put into the relationship. It's sickening. And for me, that's enough confirmation for me to leave your ass. Because what you're not going to do is devalue me for the value that I have, the value that I carry. What? I know what I did. I know what I put into the house. I know what I actually created. I know that it's because of me, this family would have been an amazing family. I know that I kept it going. I kept it afloat. Because my nature is very nourishing. Hence my compassion. That's where my unconditional love is formulated from. I know my worth. A narcissist can't do nothing but try to devalue you because they lack self-esteem. But when you wake up and you know your worth, they're going to hate you. Because knowing your worth means you've decided to not participate in the game. You're not interested. You were never interested in a game. You're not a game player. You're real. Real people don't play games. So they will forever spend their life trying to describe you as this person that you're really not because they'll be damned if everybody really knows who they really are. And unfortunately, because you were a rider, because you never told the truth about what you were really going through while you were with them, people won't believe you because they never saw evidence. You hit it so well. You made it look so good. You held it down for so long. You, 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 you carried it so well. You didn't even let it show on your face for real until towards the end when you really got tired. And so it makes it easy for them to go out here and describe you as this crazy person. But guess what though? The truth will always reveal What's done in the dark comes to light. Every narcissist will always come crashing down because all their little dark secrets come out. Karma is not is not letting them go in any kind of way. And that is just the truth from Mommy So True. You guys, I'd love to hear your thoughts, your comments. Drop them below. If you're learning and if you're growing and you're continuing to move up, and if you really don't even give an F-U-C-K about what a narcissist is saying, give me a thumbs up. Because as you grow and as you heal, it don't even matter. 
their perceptions of you and how they're trying to get everybody to see you. It don't even matter. You know who you are. You know what you put in. And you also know who they are. You know what you saw. You know what you've seen. It's all right. You don't have nothing to prove. And you shouldn't care to. So continue to thrive and move on and live your best life. Let them describe you however they want to. Because at the end of the day, they know what's up. They know. They can continue to be narcissists and act like they forgot, like they don't know. But they know. That's why they're going to spend the rest of their lives trying to clone you. <laughs> Which is freaking laughable because it's, it's not possible. All right. <laughs> so glad I was able to share that with you. For those of you looking for one-on-one -on -one sessions, book a life coaching session with me. Information is in the description box. Check out all my other platforms if you're interested and reach out to me if you have any questions or concerns or any inquiries. I'd love to talk to you. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for your love and your support and for being here with this thriving community. Continue to grow. I will see you soon. Take care. Bye guys.